Life sciences is really about understanding how life works. It all comes down to the workings of the cells and then how cells come together to do the things organisms do. Embryonic stem cells have this tremendous potential to give rise to theoretically any cell type in our body. Cells that have the potential to really be transformative in terms of drug discovery and understanding disease progression. What is a brain? That's a philosophy question. It makes decisions about how fast you should be breathing right now. But it also makes decisions that are much more profound, like what shall I do with my life? What we're trying to understand is how cells move and how they change shape. Your immune system cells move around your body all the time to look for pathogens. If you cut yourself, the cells from the wound will move together to close the wound. When movement is not controlled properly, then bad things can happen. In cancer metastasis, for instance, whenever there's a weakness in the cell surface, you're going to get something like this. You're going to have a protrusion forming. For many years, it's been thought that these were a sign of cell death. We have shown in the lab that these spherical protrusions are actually quite often completely healthy, and cells can use this to move around, for instance, and propel themselves forward. I'm interested in understanding the computations, the algorithms that the brain uses to control our behavior. Our neurons uh, represent the world around us, learn about it, and make decisions in the world. When you make a coffee, you have a sequence of actions that you know you have to achieve in order to get the coffee into the cup. Those kinds of models of the causes and outcomes, we just need those in order to guide our everyday behaviours. And what I'm interested in is how those kinds of models of the world are represented by cells in your brain. People are working with the algorithms that I've developed now in people with anxiety disorder or depression and in various other psychiatric diseases. And there's a big field of computational psychiatry which is trying to tackle psychiatry from the bottom up rather than through this more serendipitous way of finding drugs that seem to work. One of the fundamental questions that we're asking is how do early embryo cells become specialized in their fate and function? If we understood the molecular properties of these early embryo cells, it could potentially give us really fundamental insights into early pregnancy failures. We received the first license that was approved by a national regulator to genetically modify early human embryos to understand fundamental aspects about gene function in a critical window of development within the first seven days before an embryo has implanted in the womb. We've been able to demonstrate that even if a gene is present at the same time and the same place between two different species, there are actually differences in the way that it works and operates. If the gene is really important and development somehow stops, that tells us that that gene is absolutely fundamental for human development. I think it's imperative that we all collectively conduct this research with ethical rigor that it, de that it deserves. The work we started doing on how shape and fate changes are coupled is quite directly related to the kind of questions Cassie is asking about fate changes during embryonic development. There's increasing evidence that if you affect shape, if you affect mechanics, you can change the fate decisions a cell might undertake. What we're trying to do is develop tools to really address this question of what's the crosstalk between mechanics, shape, and fate during development. And if we understand how cells generate forces, then maybe we can develop better ways to change these forces when they are not exerted in an appropriate manner and possibly cure diseases which involve problems related to cell movement or cell division. We can't separate disciplines if we want to understand behaviours, especially behaviours which rely fundamentally on uh, the generation of forces by cells like movement and deformation. The person who inspired me tremendously was my PhD advisor, Cecil Sykes who is a wonderful woman and who also happens to have three children. And I always thought this was very striking and inspiring that you can have a very successful lab and a very successful family. I have a two and a half year old called Oscar, who's wonderful. Since he was born, I very clearly realized how difficult it is to combine the two. One should not hide the fact that it is difficult to combine career and family. But at the same time, again, following the inspiration of my PhD advisor, it's possible. Historically in my life, I've done loads of things that are not uh, science. I used to travel a lot, I played tennis, played golf, but in the last four years, I've basically done science and parenting. As a neuroscientist, it's really fun to have young kids. It's just quite astonishing how quickly they're learning about the world. 
it's been transformative having two small children. It's also helped clarify exactly how I approach the science so that it's a really focused way of doing research. It's wonderful. I'm really passionate about understanding early human embryo de development. Um, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it really drives me. I really want to understand this. If I can make even just a small insight, that would be really great. There have been in 20 years a few times when I've sat up and gone, wow, and those times are the reasons that you're a scientist. You feel like you know something that nobody else in the world knows for a short period of time, which is exciting. Since my father died, I've kept a picture of him in my office, of him climbing up a mountain. When I think of him, what comes to my mind is like the way is up. You have to keep going, you have to keep trying to answer the questions you want to answer, and you shouldn't rest until you get there. And also, the way is beautiful, and look around. And it's not about finding something, it's about trying to understand something, and that's what's exciting about science.